Hi, good morning, Amsterdam. My name is Mark Erickson, and today I am very excited to talk to you about debugging JavaScript. Um, fair warning, I've probably got about 40 minutes of content and uh, like 20 minutes to get through it, so I'm going to go a little bit fast. Uh, the slides all are already up on my blog, blog.isquaredsoftware.com. Feel free to pop that open and follow along or take a look at it later. A couple quick things about myself. I am a senior front-end engineer at Replay, where we're building a time-traveling debugger for JavaScript. We'll talk more about that in a few minutes. Uh, I answer questions anywhere there is a text box on the internet. I collect any link that looks potentially useful. I write extremely long blog posts, and I am a Redux maintainer. But most people know me as that guy with the Simpsons avatar. <laughs> This is not a Redux talk, but I do have one Redux-related piece of news. Uh, two days ago, while I was at the airport, I published Redux Toolkit 2.0 Beta. Uh, we have a number of things we're trying to accomplish in 2.0. Most of it has to do with modernizing the package formatting and the contents of the JavaScript. Uh, we've removed a couple deprecated APIs. We have several new APIs we've added. Uh, the biggest thing I would ask is that we would really like people to try it out in your applications right now, see how it works, give us feedback, tell us what things broke, tell us if the APIs are working so that we can move forwards towards 2.0 final. I don't have an actual timeline. I'm hoping within the next few months, hopefully, if things go well. All right, let's talk debugging. Debugging is the process of finding problems in your program and trying to figure out what's going on. In other words, why is it broken and how do we fix it? Now, as programmers, we spend a lot of time doing things other than just writing code. We are communicating with our team, we're doing planning, design, discussions, code review. We spend a lot of time trying to figure out why the code we wrote is not working. And yet, a lot of developers are not actually comfortable doing this. And I've, I've thought about this a bit. Like, I think the biggest problem is that our industry does not teach people how to debug. I mean, like, how many of you have a comp sci degree and yet never had a course in debugging? To me, debugging is an absolutely critical skill for developers. And the good news is it is something you can learn and get better at. So. Let's look at some core principles of debugging. Now, the, the title of the talk is Debugging JavaScript. These principles are universal. You can apply them to any language, and frankly, you can apply them outside of programming as well. And the first is that every problem has a cause and a reason. And it should be possible to figure out why this thing is broken. Now, just because there is a cause doesn't mean it's going to be easy to figure out. And there's a lot of things that, that, that can make that more complicated but it is possible. Another is that it's very important to understand what the system is supposed to be doing. If a bug is something is wrong with the system, you have to know what it was supposed to do in the first place to see that behavior is incorrect. Another principle is that reproducing an issue is absolutely key. For one, you need to be able to figure out what area of the code is broken, and that often requires a trial and error process of making this thing crash over and over and over. But it's also important because once you think you have a fix, you need to be able to try the same steps and verify that it actually works right. You also need to be able to debug with a plan. And this is basically the scientific method. Don't just go changing random variables and hoping it's somehow going to make it better. You need to be very careful and intentional about the changes that you make. Try one thing at a time. See if the behavior changes actually match what you expect it to be. And try to narrow down where and why something is going wrong. Another issue is that errors provide useful information, and yet people often panic when they see that gigantic stack trace. I've seen pictures of you know, like a React stack trace that is minified and you can't read anything, or a Java J2EE stack trace that's 500 lines long and your code is two lines somewhere in the middle. Now, Somewhere in there, there is useful information. You know, your, your code, your file, line 37, somewhere. 
but the errors tell you something about what's going wrong. Don't panic, try to understand it. Uh, and yes, literally just Googling your error is a good first step. There's a very famous quote from one of the inventors of the Unix operating system and the C language where he says, debugging is twice as hard as writing a program. So if you wrote really clever code, you're probably not smart enough to figure it out yourself. So try to write code that is clear and easy to understand so that sometime later, you or one of your teammates or that intern five years from now can understand what was happening. In general, the steps for debugging look something like this. First, you have to understand what is this, the description. You know, someone filed a bug report, what are they actually even trying to say is wrong? Second, reproduce the issue. You have to be able to find reproducible steps that make the error happen. You know, open up the app, click this tab, click that button, kaboom. Then, and this is the hard part, try to figure out why it's happening. A good tactic is you know, kind of like a binary search. Like, we have the whole application. Can I narrow it down to half the app? A quarter, an eight, like, like work your way, try to narrow down where in the code this is going on. And once you actually think you know what's happening and you have identified some of the symptoms, don't stop there. Keep going and try to figure out if there's like a deeper root cause problem that's happening. Once you know what's going wrong, then you can try to figure out what the best solution is for trying to fix it. And this is where you know, constraints come in. You know, maybe it's a one-line fix, maybe you think you need to rewrite the entire subsystem, but you don't have time because your team's already overloaded, maybe the code is really complicated. Try to figure out what is the right amount of effort needed to make the appropriate fix. Then actually fix it, and ideally add more tests and checks so that this doesn't happen in the future. And finally, try to document as much as possible, whether it's in the commit message, the PR, the issue, leave information for people for later so they understand what went wrong and how you fixed it. A Couple other tips. Use the right tool for the job. There are many different tools to use for debugging. We'll talk about some of them in just a second. The more tools you have in your toolbox, the better equipped you are to try to solve problems. Another is that we use many different libraries and packages and frameworks. We often treat them as black boxes. Be willing to look underneath the hood and understand what's going on inside because often understanding that behavior makes it possible to see what the real problem is. Another is just don't be afraid. You know, you, you see that giant error stack trace or you've, it's a piece of the system you've never worked on before and you might panic, especially if you're new to the team. Don't be afraid, take your time, think through it. It is something you can figure out. And then this is something I struggle with. It is very easy to get caught up in chasing it and like I'm this close to fixing it, I'm this close to fixing it and get stuck. There are times you just need to walk away, take a breath, get some sleep, come back the next day. There's been multiple times I fixed something like five minutes the next morning after being stuck for hours the previous day. All right, I'm going to have to keep on going. There's a lot of debate about should I use print statements or graphical debuggers? And I say, why not both? They are both wonderful tools. Print statements are very easy to add. They show you changes to the system over time. Graphical debuggers help you focus on a specific piece of code and go through it step by step and inspect the contents of the running program. These are both great tools to have in your toolbox. Um, different, system, different languages have different kinds of print statements available. Uh, you can add timestamps. You can have different levels of logging. In JavaScript, this is mostly done with the console methods or you might have a logging library like Winston. Uh, there are different methods for different levels. The console API also has things that let you do like print objects as a table, group messages together. Uh, one common problem I see is that people log an object or an array and sometime later they expand it and the context look, contents look different. It actually shows you what it contained at the time that you expanded it not at the time that you logged it in the first place. This is something that confuses a lot of people. Also, most JavaScript libraries are distributed as source files on disk in node modules. You can edit those yourself, but like, try to remember to remove the log statements later. 
Most graphical debuggers have the same kinds of commands and buttons inside. Uh, breakpoints let you pause at a certain point in the program. Uh, usually you would set those by left clicking on a line number. Um, there's usually panels that show the contents of variables in scope, something that shows you the call stack functions, and some buttons that let you step forward, step in, step out. As a couple examples, the Chrome DevTools have all those commands. You've got the breakpoints and the scope and the call stack on the right side. You've got a breakpoint marker over there on the left line. VS Code has basically all the same buttons, just in different places. So these are, these are all very common pieces to every IDE and every debugger. Uh, let's see, let's skip past some of this. Couple tips for debugging React. The biggest thing is to understand how React's mental model works with components and data flow. React renders, components, parents pass data as props to their children, children pass data back to their props via callback functions. If your UI is, if the stuff on the screen is wrong, either your data was incorrect or the rendering logic was wrong. If the rendering logic is right, Look at the data. Where did it come from? It came from the parent. It came from Redux. It came from Apollo. Trace the data back to where you found it. Also, be sure to use the React DevTools. The React DevTools browser extension will show you the component tree. It allows you to select a component, inspect it, and look at its prop state and hooks. Similarly, with Redux. It's, it's very important to understand the Redux data flow. You dispatch actions, reducers update the state, the UI re-renders. Uh, similarly, there is a Redux DevTools extension that shows you the history of the dispatched actions. For each action, you can inspect the contents of the action, the contents of the state, and the diff of the state as a result of that. So these are all very valuable tools to have in your toolbox. Okay, we might actually pull this off about on time. All right, so corporate job sales pitch. My day job is working for Replay. I mentioned this, and we're building a true time-traveling debugger for JavaScript. Now, it's, it's kind of ironic because the original sales pitch for Redux was time travel debugging, and it's that. Replay is that, like, times a million. One of the hardest parts of debugging is you have to be able to reproduce the issue. And sometimes that can take a lot of steps. And you, you pause at a breakpoint, you step, you say, whoops, I went one line too far. And now you have to stop the program and restart it and get all the way back to the point where you were, and it's a pain. Or the bug only happens on that one QA developer's machine on a Tuesday in February or something like that. So the idea of replay, is that we let you record a bug once and then use time travel debugging to understand what actually happened in that. The basic workflow, you download our versions of Firefox or Chrome, record the bug, make it happen once, upload it to the cloud, open up the recording in the UI, and now you can inspect the recording at any point in time. You can jump to any line of code, you can see how many times it ran, you can add console logs and print statements after the fact, and you can use step bugging to inspect things. There's also collaboration where you can add comments, have your teammates see what was going on, and even share the print statements that you've added. Replay is free for open source and individuals, it's paid for companies, we're, we're a startup, we're trying to actually make money. All right, now the fun part. We get to do a live demo. Come on, Wi-Fi. Loading, loading. Okay, good, first step. So, this is the replay UI. This is a recording I made quite a while back of the example from the Redux Fundamentals tutorial. So, we've got the viewer. I can see what the application looked like at the time it was recorded. I can jump to a couple different points in time and see what the UI looked like. But, I can flip over to DevTools mode. And this is basically like the Firefox browser dev tools in the browser, because that's actually where our code base started. So this is a Redux app. I'm probably interested in the reducers. So let's, let's go find the to-dos slice. The first thing I notice when I open this is, in addition to the line numbers, we've got all these hit counts. And those are telling me how many times each line of code ran during the recording. 
And this starts to tell you useful information. Like, maybe I expected the line to run five times, but it actually ran like 100 times. That's, that's not good. Or maybe I expected it to go into the if statement, but it didn't. Why? So I can look at the code, and I can see that for, in this example, the to-do toggled reducer ran, it looks like, three times. OK, so now I'm curious about what was going on inside of that. So I can click this plus sign. And you notice over here on the right, we have what looks like your typical browser console. And you notice we've got three messages there. And that's because that line of code ran three times. And it's evaluating the message at each line. So what if I want to say, like, the, here's the name of the function, and I want to see what the action object was at each of those. So I've edited the print statement, and it's evaluating it. There's, there's the string, and there's the entire action object, and I can expand it and take a look. OK, what if, what if I want to jump to a point in time? I could, for example, click on one of these, and now I'm paused, just like a normal step debugger, inside this function, and I can look at the values that are in scope, I can hover over them, I can inspect them, and we've got the, let's see, we've got a call stack down here somewhere. Uh, so we can see that this was triggered from some kind of React click handler, and we're inside the Redux code. Another thing we've got is there's a list of all the different times I pressed a key or I clicked, and if I hover over this, there's a jump to code button. What does that do? Well. It just jumped me right to the line of code where I dispatched, a, where I ran a click. There's my on click prop handler, and now I can start inspecting the code even further. We've even got the DOM tree at that point in time and the React component tree at that point in time. And so now I can go through the entire recording, I can see what happened, jump back and forth, inspect the system and I only had to make the recording once. I am having a ton of fun building this application, and I truly believe it is a revolutionary change in how we debug. So please check it out. It will save you a ton of time. I wish I'd had it years ago. All right, that's all I've got, and I actually basically finished on time. That's impressive. Uh, like I said, the slides are up on my blog. I've got links to a bunch of additional resources about debugging. Uh, please come by and say hi, ask questions about Redux or Replay or debugging or whatever. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.